Kingdom Kids, it's Reverend Renee Jones, and I'm so glad that you've joined for another exciting day of worship and the Word. But before we get started, let's join the praise team, and we have a special treat for you this morning. So here we go. We Yes. We will praise you for the rest of our days. 
give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath. for using all of our gifts and talents this morning. Thank you, praise team and dancers, for God using you to bless us. Now, let's go to God in prayer. 
Our Lord and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all of your many blessings. God, we thank you for using us to worship you and to give you praise. Now, God, we ask that you will open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts, that we will hear all that you would have us to know, that we will see all that you will have us to know and experience the same. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now for our scripture. Our scripture today is coming from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35, which I would like for you to read this week with your parents. But for our time together, we are going to read Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 15, and I'm reading from the New International Version. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they did not recognize him. The title of today's lesson is More Than This. All month long, we've been talking about how Jesus came and he turned the world upside down with humility. Now, can you tell me what humility is? I know you know it. That's right. Humility is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Today, we're picking up things right after Easter when Jesus had died on the cross and he had been raised from the dead. The Bible story is a little bit different today because I need you to join me in helping to tell the story by participating. Now, I don't want just some of you to participate. I want all of you to participate. We pick up the story right after Easter when Mary runs to tell Peter and John that Jesus is nowhere to be found. The tomb is actually empty. Peter and John and Mary, they go back to the tomb and Peter and John go in and they look and they see the linen cloths where Jesus had been, that Jesus had been buried in, but Jesus was nowhere to be found. That same day, two of Jesus' friends were headed to a village called Emmaus. It was a long walk, about seven miles from Jerusalem. So here's what I need you to do. I need everybody to get up on your feet. And I want you to start walking into a huge circle. One, two, three, go, start walking. Keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. That's great, only six and three quarter miles to go. Keep, keep it up, keep it up, you're doing good, you're doing good. Keep walking, 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 walking. Walking. Okay, that's good. You may take your seat. Back to the lesson. We don't know what these two men uh, encountered as they walked along the road. Maybe a few animals, maybe a donkey here or there, maybe a stray dog, maybe some families with babies crying. On the way, the two men were talking about everything that had happened in Jerusalem, about how Jesus had died on the cross and the tomb was empty and maybe, just maybe, he had come back to life again. They didn't know what to make of all of this, but as they were walking and talking, a man shows up and he starts walking along with them and he asked them, hey guys, what are you talking about? And they said, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. They didn't realize that it was Jesus. So they said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't you know what's been going on in the last few days in Jerusalem? Or were you under a rock? Uh, I mean, so much has happened and you don't even know what is going on? Jesus said, what things? The men just stared at him. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet. He was powerful in what he said and did in the sight of God and all the people. The men went on and they told Jesus all about himself. They explained how the chief priests and rulers had made up lies and gotten Jesus sentenced to death and being nailed to the cross. They told Jesus the whole story of everything he had done. Okay, get up on your feet, up on your feet. Now I want you to try these moves with me. All right, here we go. 
Then the men said, we hoped that Jesus was going to free all the people. Plus, it's the third day since all of this happened. A few of his friends were amazed too. They went to the tomb early this morning and the tomb was empty. Great job, kids. Then Jesus spoke. He said, how foolish are you? How long it takes you to believe that the prophets what the prophet said, didn't the Messiah have to suffer these things and then receive his glory? Jesus went on to remind them of all the scriptures God had laid out was part of his master plans. How ever since the beginning, God had planned to send a savior. He went on all the way back to Moses and, and the prophets. This probably took a while. Remember, they were on their road to Emmaus, which took about seven miles. He talked about all the scriptures that predicted his birth, his life, and his death. As they were walking and talking, Jesus kept on along the road with them. And all of it once, he kept on as if he was going to continue down the path. But the men were so amazed, they didn't want him to stop. They wanted him to stay with them a little bit longer. They tried to keep him from leaving. They asked him to stay with them since it was getting late. Jesus agreed to stay with them. They sat down together for an evening meal. Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he started to give it to them. Immediately, the men realized it was Jesus. But then, in an instant, poof, Jesus disappeared from their sight. I am sure the men were like, what happened? What just happened? They got up at once and started on a journey back to Jerusalem. Let's go. Let's go. We've got to tell the disciples. We've got to tell them. Then think of how excited these two men must have been. They have just sat down for a meal with Jesus. But they had also just came a seven mile journey. But they figured, you know what? We may be tired, but we've got to tell the good news. We've got to go tell the disciples. We've got to find our way back to Jerusalem. They found the 11 disciples and started telling them everything that had happened, how they, uh, Jesus had come and walked with them along the road and how he explained the scriptures and how they finally realized who he was when he began to pass the bread to them. It was true. It was all true. Jesus was alive. The disciples were starting to get a bit better idea of uh, how big God's plan really is. It's bigger and it's stretched longer and further through history than any of them could ever imagine. Remember this everyone, there's always more to discover about God's plan. Can you say that with me? There's always more to discover about God's plan. Kids and parents, that was an amazing story. It excites me so much. But now, let's go to God in prayer. God, your plan is so big. Thank you for always hearing our prayers. Thank you for being right by our side, even when things happen that we don't totally understand. I pray that all of us, myself included, will never stop wanting to learn more about you. We love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Children and parents, the disciples thought that they had seen the last of Jesus when uh, he was died when he died on the cross. They had no idea that God has such a greater plan for them, and He has a greater plan for us too. And if we continue to trust Him more and more, He will reveal his plan to us. Continue to believe and trust in Jesus. Have a great week. Bye.